Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mistress of the Real with another video. I decided to make a random video about my home movie projector that I love. This is the first projector that I ever got to run inside my house. It's my first small gauge projector. And it was given to me about three years ago from my film mentor, Gary Locker. I wanted to figure out how to go about getting a small gauge projector for my apartment and he decided to generously give me one from his collection. Side note, Gary has a YouTube channel where he's been uploading theater snipes and theater ads. So if you're really into that, he's uploading some really great stuff. So I'm gonna put the link down here so you can check that out. So this projector is a 1948 Revere 16 millimeter theater tone sound projector. It's a very long title. And it was released by the Revere Camera Company in 1948 and it was made for the home like most small film gauges, gauge projectors were. And it has a 1600 foot reel capacity. It has an extender arm that you attach or you kind of screw into the projector. So this, you only can see the outside of the projector, but this is its carrying case. So it has this really neat handle and it's supposed to be lightweight. It's kind of heavy for me. Uh, I've had to carry up a lot of hills. It doubles as a speaker. So as you can see, here's the speaker and it has a cord that you plug into the projector that's from the speaker. And you can actually place the speaker pretty far away from the projector itself. And it has a really good sound for how old it is. And it hasn't failed me yet, fingers crossed. This projector was sold for $287.50 in 1948 from the ads I've seen, which in today's money would be $3,104.39. So this was not an extremely affordable projector. You know, um, I'm making the assumption and from what I've read about home movies, a lot of families had to be, you know, middle class or upper middle class to be able to afford something like this, as well as the Revere camera that they pair this projector with in a lot of the ads that I see. Other ads from about 1949 have listed as $299.50. I'm not really sure what the difference is. I'm assuming they're the same models, but I don't really know why there's a price difference. So this is a really user-friendly projector, which is why I'm really happy that I was able to get it and have it be my first projector that I ever used inside my house. So the ads say it's user-friendly that even a child can use it. Most ads from for home movie projectors say that. They say it's lightweight. Again, it pretty much, it kind of is. <laughs> it just depends on where you're carrying it. Don't carry it up a hill like I have. It comes with automatic rewind, so it can automatically rewind your reel when you're done with it. And you can also connect it, not only can you connect it to a speaker that comes with it, you can connect it to a phonograph or a microphone in case you would like to add some musical accompaniment to silent films that you're running, like silent home movies or just silent features, or in case you wanna record over your home movies, which I've seen a lot of people do uh, with their home movies, which is really cool. I haven't tried either of those because I don't have the attachment for that, but you know, once, if I ever do find those attachments, I would love to test it out and let you guys know how it goes. So it has about a 750 watt bulb and has AC, DC universal control and true fidelity tone. And it's really easy to thread and problem solve. It's supposed, it's supposed to come with a manual. Most of them are supposed to come with manuals. Because it was a hand-me-down, mine did not. But I do see a lot of ads on eBay or Etsy or any of those reseller sites where they do sell these models and they do come with a lot of the manuals, which is really nice. I wish I had the original manual. The manual is online. You can download it from several different sites in a PDF, but whoever scanned it, and I, I kind of think it's the same copy that's been going around, it looks really bad. Like it was a really bad scan because I can barely kind of read what it says. Uh, so maybe someday if I'm able to find the manual, I will definitely do that because I'd like to be able to read it. Other than that, from what I can read from the manual, it's actually helped me problem solve some issues I've had with it, which isn't very much, but just maybe some threading issues, you know, because this was my first projector that I had in my house that wasn't a big, a larger gauge, like 35 or 70. And most people who have experience with film, at least that I've met, they started with small gauges like 
16, you know, eight, super eight. I started the other way. I started with 35 and went down to 16 and then eight and super eight, which was a little bit harder of an adjustment for me because compared to 35, 16 millimeter film, which it, it kind of is, is more fragile. And I was like, oh, this is fragile. I'm afraid to run it and I'm afraid to like touch it. <laughs> but when I was, when I got this projector that kind of eased a lot of my apprehension when approaching uh, smaller gauges. So I'm really thankful for that. So this is a different angle, but here is the projector before you take it out of the case. There's those two latches right there, and then you can see the speaker. So this is the projector without the case on. So I'm just going to point some things out while I talk about it. So this is the motor button. Um, you know, turn the motor on, turn the lamp on. This is the sound button. The sound button, so for this projector, the sound is kind of wonky. So I try to turn it all the way up before I start the motor for some reason that like makes the sound adjust better. Um, this is the bass and the treble if you wanna mess with that. I usually don't. So this knob lifts the projector up so that it can be aimed at more of an angle, especially if you have like a screen or something. Um, and so here's the, you know, if you're running a smaller reel, you can put the smaller reel here and then the smaller reel up here. And here's where you can plug in the microphone and the phonograph. And here's where you plug in the cord to uh, an outlet to start it. And so usually, and then here's the framing and you focus it by twisting the knob. So to thread it, it comes down here. Let me go back down this way. And then it goes like this under, and then it makes a little loop. You s open the gate and put it through the gate. And then it comes out here and then it goes between this and the sound drum over and then under and then up this way and then over this and then under that and then out to so i just pulled the jack from the case this is the jack for the speaker and there's a lot more feet but i'm just pulling it out a little bit so where you plug it in is there's this you plug it in right here which is an awkward angle but you just go like that and then it's connected and then all you have to do is just plug it in and then start the projector once you have the film threaded.